All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I've been going through using a fairly simplistic payroll application trying to teach you some Java here. And we've gotten to Chapter 6 in our book where we're kind of making a break because we're going from using Java as a, quote, regular programming language, unquote, to an object-oriented programming language. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to literally come back in here and, for lack of better words, kind of start from scratch. So I've got, I so far created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different applications. All right, and I'm going to make now a tenth. And this is going to be called payroll number 06. And there will only be one of these. All right. So a lot of the ones I do from now on, I'm only going to have one. In fact, while I'm doing this, I'm going to immediately create number 7 also because my program 6 and 7 are going to be similar to one another but program 6 I'm not going to use an array of payroll objects and in program 7 I will use an array of program objects so that's going to be the main difference between the two so as always let me come in here and let me this is kind of a waste right here, but I'm just going to save it anyway, so I'm going to do a save all file, and I'm going to close my project, which gets me to here, I create a new project, you know the drill by now, so the first thing that I'm going to do is to come in here, and under my source, I'm going to create a new Java class. And I want this, as always, to be edu. Rankin.jpscott.payroll. Nothing new there. All right. But it is going to start changing now. Okay. So I'm going to literally, no copying in here, I'm going to write this one from scratch. This may end up being, I don't know, a longer lecture than most, or I may have to break this into parts one and two, because I'm more concerned with you understanding what's going on here than anything else. All right? So I am going to come in, and I'm going to create... So I'm going to declare and initialize my class constants. They look very similar to what we had before. So I'm going to have here private static final double max non OT oops, equals equals 40.0 You already know this, but most hours worked no overtime. All right. Now, I'm going to have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six of these. So to make my life a little easier, I'm just going to, now I'm going to get these errors, but I'll fix them as we go through here. All right. So next, let's have OT rate. You've seen this before, and that will be at 1.5. In other words, over you know time and a half. All right, making some progress. Next, we're going to have min hours, which is the smallest number of hours you can work. We're going to again assume that the person can be off for the week, that the person can um, be on vacation, doesn't matter. So min hours, so we're going to say minimum, minimum hours worked. And let's make this one a little bit simpler here. So 
so we'll call this max hours. You've seen this before, so there's nothing new to anybody watching who's watched all of these tapes. So the maximum number of hours you can work sure what happened there but the maximum number of hours that you can work then hour are 84 okay we'll also have a min rate and we'll have a max rate I'm gonna just use the same stuff I used before so this minimum rate will be zero and the maximum rate will be 100 we could always change that so this will be the minimum Minimum pay rate and this will be the maximum pay rate. All right, I'm getting right now these underlines because I've created these constants, but I'm not using them. Those values. I am still both declaring and initializing. All right? Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say declare instance variables. That means every time I create a payroll object, they will have these. And I decided to cut this down. I'm not even going to have a middle name. Why? I've already got a first name and a last name. So I'm going to have here private string first name. No, uh, no initialization at all. So this will be employee first name. And the next one will be the last name, so let's just copy it. All right. We'll also have a private double that we'll call hours worked. You've seen this before. And this will be employee hours worked. And we'll have a private double hourly rate. And that will be the employee hourly pay. And we'll have a private double gross pay, which will be the employee gross pay. Now I'm not going to put here, even though I could, um, hours work times hourly rate because we are going to account for overtime. All right. We're going to attempt at least to create a couple other variables. Now these are instance variables. I am going to create five employee objects in a bit. All right. There will be a Jeff payroll object, a Sandra payroll object, a Taylor payroll object, a McKenzie or a Kenzie payroll object, and a Chloe payroll object. Each one of them will have a first name, a last name, an hours worked, an hourly rate, and a gross pay. So each time, each object, so an object is an instance, so each instance is going to have all five of these. But I'm also going to have two variables so I'm going to say here, declare and initialize class variables. These are going to be shared. Okay? So the first one will say here, protected static int. And let's call this uh, emp count, employee count. All right? And we'll set that equal to zero. And we'll call this here employee counts. All right, and another protected 
static. This one will be a double. And this will be total gross pay. And we'll set that equal to 0, 0.0. And that'll be total gross pay all employees. All right? What I want you to start understanding here is this, the values that you see there are going to be used, especially these right here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Those values are going to be used for validation, all right, to make sure that I've created the correct types uh, or, or the correct uh, ranges for my variables. These values here and here are going to be used for my gross pay calculation. These values or these variables, so those are all constants. These cannot change now. These values are all instance variables, so each time I create a payroll object, each payroll object will have a first name, a last name, an hour's work, an hourly rate, and a gross pay. All right. Here, this will be a count of all the employees I have, so if I make a Jeff, a Sandy, a Taylor, a McKenzie, and a Chloe, the count will be five. So imagine that Jeff's total gross pay is 1,000, Sandy is 2,000, Taylor is 3,000, Mackenzie is 4,000, and Chloe is 5,000. That would mean that the total gross pay would be 15,000. All right. I could do other things in here. Maybe we will later, maybe we won't. We could figure out the highest gross, the lowest gross, the average gross, etc. We could do a lot of that stuff, but that's not what this example here is about. All right. I'm also going to create two decimal format patterns. And I'm not even sure if I'm going to use these in here or not. I'm looking right here to see. Just to be sure, I'll put them in here. All right. So declare and initialize decimal format patterns. All right. So decimal format pattern one equals new decimal for, don't worry about the fact that it's red. We'll fix that in just a minute. Format. And this will be our pattern that does not have a dollar sign. Pound, 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 comma, pound, 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 comma, pound, 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 zero, point zero, zero. Now, I explained what all that meant in an earlier lecture, so I'm not going to go over it again. And I'm going to copy this and put in a pattern two. It's going to look just like pattern one, except this one will have a dollar sign. All right, now I'm going to take my mouse, put it over here, do an alt enter and it says what do I want to do well, try it again alt enter all right notice it added my import statement for me I could have manually added it as well all right but now what I have is I have the beginning of what I want to do here all right so what I have done is I've got my typical package statement here. All right. I've got an import statement. Nothing new there. I've got my public class payroll. You've seen this before. These are class constants. So I'm going to be able to use these throughout my entire class. They are declared outside of any routine. I haven't created any methods yet. These are my instance variables. All right, and they will be used. They will be used for each instance. So if I get, if I create a Jeff, a Sandy, a Taylor, a Kenzie, and a Chloe, I'll have five of those. There'll be five first names, five last names, five hours work, five hourly rates, and five gross pays. All right. These are not instance variables. 
these are class variables. Now, you'll notice that all of these were declared as being private, meaning they only can be used and manipulated directly within here. All right? These are all static. I might have been able to get away without making those static. I don't know if I could or not. All right, but I'm just going to leave them as static. These are private, but they're not static. These are called protected. Now, before I showed you this, and I talked about object-oriented programming, okay? Now, there's more to object-oriented programming than the stuff that you saw there, just so you're aware of it, all right? And <clears throat> a couple of other things that are typically used in here. Now, this isn't so much object-oriented programming, but it does fall into the object-oriented programming realm. And these are what are called access specifiers. All right. And let me hit enter a few times and get that stuff on. So, we're going to talk here about public, about private, and about protected, which is the one we haven't seen yet. If something is public, it's available <clears throat> throughout the current class and any other class. So if I make a variable public, which you normally do not do, then that variable is available, all right, then that variable is available to that class and any other class, okay? All right, private, that's available throughout the current class only, okay? And then you've got the third one here, which is protected, and that's available to both the current class and any descendants, which we haven't talked about yet, of the current class, all right? So we're going to get into protected a little bit more later, but I just decided to put it in here to introduce you to it. Now, I talked about here, I talked about classes, I talked about objects, I talked about attributes, and I talked about methods, all right? In a nutshell, now you, you, you have been exposed to what these mean, but my very simple OOP definition is object-oriented programming uses public methods to manipulate private data. Now, that's a generalization because you can have private methods in object-oriented programming. You can have public data in object-oriented programming. If you have private methods, all right, private methods are also known as typically helper, or utility methods, all right? Now, I've, I've given this example in class before, and I'm going to give it again. Imagine that uh, I'm teaching in class, and I'm very thirsty, but I'm also very busy, and I don't have time to, uh, to get myself a, a soda, all right? So I've got student Mary in my class, and Mary owes me a favor because I, uh, in fact, let's say Mary's another instructor, okay? And she owes me a favor because I went and I 
uh, talk to her class about careers and programming. So I say, hey, Mary, you know, I know you owe me a favor and you always say, what can I do for you? Would you please go down to the cafeteria and get me a soda? Okay. All right. So Mary's about to go down to the cafeteria to get me a soda, but then a friend of hers, John, <clears throat> walks by, and John owes her a favor because she went into John's class and spoke about, let's say, how to get a CCNA certification. So she said, hey, John, do me a favor. Go down to the cafeteria and get me a Coke. So John goes down to the cafeteria, gets Mary a Coke. Mary gives that Coke to me. I have no idea that Mary asked John to do the favor. All right? So that's actually a private method. It's a helper method. John helped Mary. Who helped me? You can also have public data, although it's very, very rare that you do. So, this is my definition, but it only holds true most of the time. So, mostly you use object oriented, in object oriented programming, mostly you use public methods, and mostly they're used to manipulate private data. But again, you can have public methods, you can have private methods, you can have protected methods. You can have private data, you can have public data, you can have protected data. So I'm giving you this, you know, kind of the, the 35,000 foot view of what's going on here. All right. So we have looked at so far this. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come in and I'm going to start creating I'm going to start creating methods. One thing you'll notice about this is this particular this particular class will not repeat not have a main method. All right? So I'm going to do a file save all and I'm going to stop right here. I'm already at 23 minutes just about and I'm going to save this as chapter 6 part 1. There'll be at least a part two and probably also a part three, which I'll be back to talk to you about in just a couple minutes.